Hey, good day. I uh, just wanted to do the follow-up video to uh, the corpus luteum, the, so the ovarian cycle, but the effects of, uh, on the corpus luteum when a woman is pregnant. Uh, the last video, of course, was if she wasn't pregnant. Uh, so this is kind of like the follow-up video to this. So again, we're going to do it in the same format that we did last time. Here is a diagram. Let's just fill some of this in. Now, I'm not going to go through the same detail I did for the first one, but we know this is the primary follicle. This is the secondary follicle. Uh, we get a primary developing into secondary follicles when we have high levels of FSH. So that's all going to be the same. Uh, that's going to mature into a graphene follicle, but nonetheless, this both of these start producing high levels of estrogen. We talked about that before. We said estrogen has some effects. We're just doing this quicker because we did this in the first video here, but we said maintains the endo, uh, has a negative effect on FSH. We don't want another primary follicle developing and it increases LH. And we said LH causes ovulation. Now we said that this egg would then go into the oviduct or the fallopian tubes where it, in this case, because we're talking about when you are pregnant, we're talking about it is actually going to be fertilized. Okay, so when it is fertilized, we know, uh, and you're gonna see this in chapters 15 when we look at human development, we called a fertilized egg uh, a zygote. Okay, and that's going to develop, right? It's gonna start to uh, uh, divide very quickly through mitosis. It's going to turn into a marula, and then it's going to turn into a what's called a blastocyst. And again, you're going to see this in chapter 15. Okay, uh, then what happens is these secondary follicles around here develop into the corpus luteum with high levels of LH as well. Okay, now this corpus, we already talked about what the corpus does, but it releases high levels of progesterone. And we said that's typically around days after ovulation. This ovulation, of course, is day 14. So right after that, we get the corpus developing around days 15 uh, to, you know, days 28. And you'll see questions like that on a test. You'll see all sorts of different graphs showing when progesterone is high or maybe when estrogen is high. So you do have to remember these days. Okay, so again, you won't have high levels of progesterone until this corpus uh, has developed out of these secondary follicles. Okay, and then we talked about what this does. Okay, so we said, number one, maintains the endo. Uh, and it does that by inhibiting, and let's just put that, we didn't talk about this on the last video, but it inhibits uterine contractions. So that's how it actually uh, prevents the shedding of the endometrium. Uh, negative feedback on FSH, we said, and negative feedback on LH. We don't need those anymore, done their job. So if you, we said in the last video, if you're not pregnant, the corpus will degenerate. But when you are pregnant, because in this case, we said the egg actually did get fertilized, we now call it a zygote, uh, we need to maintain this corpus. This must be maintained if we're going to keep pregnancy, uh, the, um, keep the pregnancy going. So what does that, and this is what's very different, is the embryo itself, and you're going to see later on that it's the outer layer of the embryo called the chorionic layer of the developing embryo is going to release what's called uh, embryonic HCG. So in your notes, we know that's human chorionic because it is the chorion layer that's actually releasing this HCG. So human chorionic gonadotropic hormone. 
So it's released by the embryo itself. So you can see why if you are not pregnant, the corpus will degenerate all by itself. If you are pregnant, the embryo itself at the blastocyst stage releases HCG, which does this, maintains the corpus. And as long as the corpus is maintained, you're going to increase progestion levels. You're going to maintain the endometrium so the uterus will not contract. And that endometrium, of course, is supporting the embryo. Right, providing nutrients and everything, eventually it's going to develop into the placenta. So HCG levels will stay high for the first two months of pregnancy. After that, the placenta itself starts releasing its own hormones, progestogen and some estrogen, and then that will maintain the pregnancy after a while and the corpus is no longer needed. But this is initially what happens when you are pregnant. So this is a very important question right in here that you'll see multiple times. Uh, this is why when you are testing for pregnancy on those home pregnancy tests, what they're actually measuring is HCG levels. And if you have any HCG in there, you have to be pregnant because that's coming from the embryo itself, uh, particularly at the blastocyst stage. Okay, and uh, you do not repeat this cycle, right? Uh, this is also why that in birth control pills, you will have high levels of progestin and estrogen because it's fooling the body into thinking that you are already pregnant. And high progestin levels causes low FSH, will not allow a follicle, a primary follicle to develop. So that's why in a lot of those birth control pills, you have those high levels of the uh, female hormones in that to suppress FSH. Okay, so kind of complex, but you can see the difference when you are pregnant uh, and how we, again, have to maintain this corpus luteum. If you have any questions, contact me via email and we'll go over some of this again if you need to. Uh, and again, when you uh, have these uh, diagrams, just keep rewriting what I've kind of went through and eventually that material is going to stick. Because as I say, and as you know, this is pretty uh, complex with all the different fluctuations in hormones. And, um, and stuff like that. So anyways, contact me if you have any issues. If not, good luck on the exams and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks guys, bye.